The Devizes to Westminster is one of the oldest ultra-endurance races in the world, but it's still a real toughie. George and I have been training hard for about three months, so we're hoping for a good time, certainly well within the 24-hour cutoff. So we're just about to get started, 125 miles of water ahead of us. Starting off on the canal for the first part of the day and then as the night starts, heading down the Thames to our final stop at Westminster in the Houses of Parliament. 125 miles, a very, very long way. I do a lot of endurance races, a lot of big expeditions that have a very physical element to them. Um, but this time round, we're doing it for a real cause. So the idea was initially that we were going to try and buy a big chunk of rainforest in Colombia, which we're going to retire, so it can't be cut down, so it's going to be protected. So we're doing the race to raise money to do that, and we've managed to raise an extraordinary amount. Of we're already at about £44,000, which is a chunk of rainforest that's bigger than the country of Monaco. Uh, we intend to go even further than that, and that is going to be a big chunk of forest and beautiful gorgeous biodiverse rainforest in Colombia that no one will ever be able to touch. You know what, after the first section, which is just purely canal with no portages, you actually look forward to the locks because it breaks it up and you get a chance to use new muscles. But then all of a sudden, you get hit with this chunk where there is just lock after lock after lock after lock and you end up running the whole thing. And that is tough. Absolute disaster. No more than 25 miles in, and our second rudder wire is broken. To have one go is kind of unfortunate. Two looks like carelessness. <laughs> we uh, are now completely stuck. I mean, we've run probably the last three miles, I guess, part of it with the boat on our shoulder. And um, yeah, we can certainly forget about a good time now. Now it's just going to be about finishing, if we can even get the boat up and running again. Another rudder break, third one, just snapped. This is ridiculous. The boat is just falling apart on us today. We're nearly 40 miles in, which is a third of the way. But we're so far behind schedule, it's just not even funny. Really good for morale, getting changed, getting this dry stuff. But um, we've got all the fast crews starting to come through us. Yeah, okay, which we didn't really want to happen until, well, for about another 10 hours. As it started getting dark, we knew we were in trouble. If we didn't make the tide at Teddington, we wouldn't be allowed on and our race would have been over. All that work, 100 plus miles for nothing, it was a pretty bleak time. We've kind of got That's our mojo good. back a little bit, actually. Yeah. The, the, canal really was, well. the canal was horrid, it was really, really awful. It just seemed like everything was against yeah, us. Yeah. You know, we had the, uh, the problems with the boat, there was a headwind and, and it just has been horrific. But now we're on the river, it kind of feels like we're just getting started. I, I can't wait to get stuck in. It's midnight, witching hour, and uh, we are over halfway. We are getting faster the further on we go. And uh, I'm still feeling strong, actually. We're out high. <laughs> Two thumbs good. Two thumbs good. Paddling non-stop for that length of time is a killer, and it's mostly mental. Bad morale or sight, and you're done for. Good morale, and the miles just fly by. Ah, oh, I'm feeling fantastic, it's great. I can speak 500 different languages, and it's fantastic, and I paddle at a million miles an hour, it's great! <laughs> you hit 3 or 4 a.m. when your body is at its lowest ebb, and all you want to do is sleep. But then you realize there's still 40 miles to go. And that's, that's a long way. So the situation is, we've got a very limited amount of time to do the next eight miles, George. Eight miles. To make sure that we can make the tide. Yes, that's so that we are. Oh, thank you very much. And it's coffee, it's we are on the dash. Your, yeah, we're on the right, it's moved oh, yeah. go blocks. Oh, still strong, still oh, going well. Bubble. Yep. We're gonna make it. We're yeah, we're gonna make, gonna make it, it, mate. We are gonna make You'll it. Make it. We made the tide at Tainton by the skin of our teeth. 30 minutes later, and we wouldn't have been allowed to continue. But there's still hours to go, and you are physically finished, running on empty by then. 
from here on in, it is just pure slog. So you do all you can to distract your mind from the blisters, the nappy rash, the burning shoulders. But once you start seeing those London landmarks and start ticking off all the bridges, you know you're on the home straight. From there on in, what you do is just think about all those people who've supported you, all the money they've raised, and quite what can be achieved with that. And that's what carries you through to the end. We did it, what an incredible achievement. Pretty good, well done buddy. Well done. That was fantastic. Amazing. That was the longest, <laughs> most toughest thing I've ever done. Let's go get a shower. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we made it, we got here. The bells are chiming in the background, how about that? Right on cue, absolutely amazing. To everyone at the World Land Trust, all I have to say is that you have been absolutely extraordinary. We managed to do something tangible to try and save a big chunk of rainforest and a lot of that is down to you guys. So thank you so, so much. Uh, we did it, 23 hours, about 30 minutes, and uh, we're all dying now. I'm still going up and down. Feels like I'm still in the boat. Anyway, thank you all very, very much.